So we're going to work on these 951 carbs um, to rebuild them. I've separated them, removing um, you know the top here, and the four screws, and the little rod, and um, disassemble. I remove this hose here, and I'm going to have to take off these hoses also. So you got to be careful with these. These kind of break really easy. Keep breaking them too. Now we're gonna grind them real quick. Let me. Go. I'm gonna take these. These this little plastic T will break super easy. That's why we cut the hose here. So I usually take it over to the grinder or cut them right here. I'll, I'll cut them with my grinder, and then the clamp will snap, and then it heats up the hose, and then it comes off really easy. Anyway, so we'll use this little gizmo. I don't know how many times that little T right there gets broke. We can fix them with a fitting. It's still a pain. So anyways, we've got the first one stripped down. This one right here. So stuck on there. there goes. Okay. Now this hose right here on the bottom of the fuel assist valve has a you can almost see the bump out in it if you look carefully right here. See it's like swelled out a little bit fat right there. That's a little restrictor valve that's inside of there. So you want to make sure that you leave that in there. Sometimes these hoses are super tight and you have to replace them, but this one feels pretty good. But if you do have to replace it, remember to take this, cut this valve out of here and then put it into the new hose. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and tear this. Up. Actually, I'm going to go over to the parts washer right now and wash these two carburetors on the outside before we continue. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, got them rinsed off and blowed off. Now they're a little bit cleaner to deal with. So we'll start on um, one of these carburetors has a fuel pump. Only one of them. That's this side. This side with the fuel assist pump, it does not have a fuel pump. It just has the, the plate on here. So we'll start on the fuel pump side here. And we're going to change my bit. This has the big Phillips on it. We're going to go with the smaller one. And we're going to go ahead and take this apart real quick.
pretty grody here, but it looks like someone has had these apart not too long ago. You could pull those jets out. A lot of times I just clean them with a, a wire cleaner um, because sometimes they're stuck in there and then you ruin the carburetor trying to dig them out. But for the homeowner, uh, we can take them out, usually no problem. But for showing the average Joe at home, you know, probably not safe to do that if you don't need to. You know, but you just basically put a wire in there, clean it, use your blow gun sure that they're good so if you uh, if you take your jets out here on this side you turn out your jets and remove them you can um, count them and then put them back in the same the same that you took them out from okay so this one that we're gonna close it first is that half one turn one and a half turns so it's one and a half turns out and go ahead and remove it Okay, there's this gasket here. So I'm going to scrape this little gasket off of here. So this one's all the way closed, which is normal. So when I put it back together, I'm gonna leave it open a quarter of a turn. So the lower, the lows were one and a half turns out and the upper was closed. That's normal on a CDU, I should say, not on a uh, Yamaha. They usually have theirs open. For some reason, CDUs has their up, their highs closed. So at this point, we got the whole carb stripped down except for these two jets and the seat. Now the seat, I'm going to look at that with my loop. I have a little loop here. And I'll look at the seat and see if there's any damage on the seat. If I don't see any marks or anything on it, I'll leave it in. So and it looks pretty good. So when I do replace the, uh, some carb rebuilds will always replace the needles in the seats. They don't come with the carb kits. You have to buy them extra if you do. But I'm not recommending that you change the springs uh, unless you know what you're doing. Because if you change the springs, um, you're going to be struggling probably with the pop-offs. This is the OEM one. It's probably fine. When we do a pop-off, we'll test it and see if it's okay. So my guess is it's fine. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and scrub this with a little wire brush. Side two.
We're going to go ahead and test this little uh, fuel assist port where the gas sprays in. Make sure that that's clear. I'm just going to put a little bit of brake clean through there and see if it sprays. And it's spraying good. So, so it's working. So it's clear at this point. It's really ready back to assemble. So not too bad for this part. So we're going to move on to um, this side here. Now the carb kits you should be using are usually are the OEM um, Makuni brands, okay? Now there is another brand that I've used and it's made in the States here. It's called Vertex. And it's a really quality uh, kit and I've had never had any trouble with them. And the gaskets has always fit really well. So either use Vertex or use uh, Makunis. So, but uh, other sets I've seen online are, you know, I, I haven't tried them, but I know a lot of the China ones are, what what the problem with them is, is that the rubber doesn't fit well. So uh, the rubber's not fat enough. Like the thickness of this is not thick enough. So it's thin like that. And so they'll use this thin one and then they leak. So that's generally the problem you're finding with the, um, with the, um, um, kit so it, look this one. Here's another example the thin ones come in the cheap kits and The thicker one is the one you want to use and that keeps them from leaking and and then the other problem is on on these ones I've noticed that if they have uh, if they're this particular one is a used one and here is the replacement of uh, Vertex see this one's a little bit wore out and a little stretched out this one is a really good one. Now, when I put gas, I put the cheap China ones of these, put them right in the gasoline and let them set, and they all deform. This one doesn't do that, and um, so it's got the right kind of rubber with it. It's actually fuel resistant. So this is a good kit, and I'm not getting any money for Veritex. I don't get any money from this channel at all, as a matter of fact. Only when customers see, the, see what I'm doing there and they call me, that's the only way I make money is if someone calls me because I don't have enough viewers uh, but anyway so and um, I'll take a look at this now uh, this could be replaced there is one of them in there but this one is laying perfectly flat so I'm just gonna just gonna leave it but uh, Drop that in there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put our needle back in, in our seat, or our needle, I mean. I look at this through a loop. It's looking pretty good. I don't see any damage on it. I don't ever replace these either uh, unless there's something wrong with it. I just noticed that I, I just kind of just leave that if that's you know good. So that in the spring, I just don't think that that's a good deal most of the time for most people. We change them when we're doing like a Green Hulk mod or something like that. I'm 1,200 hours, but other than that, or if there's someone is screwed with them. Test that there. Not that there.
the hole always goes to the bottom to drain. So Could leave this open while I did the pop off, but it's really easy to take off if I need to if I'm having trouble when I'm doing the pop off. So we'll just leave it for now. When you put this one in, if it's the good one, it'll always stick up quite a bit above the aluminum. If they're, the, if they're not right, they will be too low and they won't seal up when you put them in. The plastic should go down next. Uh-oh, not that one. Actually, this along. And then the rubber. And it's a nice gasket. It's nice and thick. This is good gasket material for the pump. So we're going to take apart the fuel pump now. That little two millimeter Allen key over there. That really small one. This might work. Got two millimeter. Okay. I use this two mil to pop these out. It's still strong enough to push on pretty hard. Taking those out, even though they don't look damaged, sometimes you know. Just better to replace them because they'll get little kinks in these. They might turn real easy. So Pushing from the sides until you get it to pop in there. Kind of turn it once you get it in and it will pop in there on the edge. You can use your blade to kind of just spring it out a little bit. That's it. That one's in there good. Carefully don't re-dimple or kink these when you put them back in. If you do, you'll have to change them again. But that one looks pretty good. So install it. This one here.
This little plastic is quite a bit wrinkled right here, or crumpled up. So we'll pop it by putting air in there. And what that does is it just helps you so you don't have to, uh, if it pops it all right. There it goes. So if it's popped, you can just peel it off. And the gasket is usually fine underneath it here. Unless there's any tears or anything like that. But if you pop it off like that, usually it'll be all right. So you don't want you won't have to replace this gasket, which is quite a bear to scrape off because it's really, really stuck to there. And it's quite a bit of work to get that off without damaging the aluminum housing. You see, there's the new one. But we're just going to leave it. And... So, and there's the new, new one. Change this O ring on this jet. Close it all the way down, just snug, and open it up a turn and a half. One and a half. Okay. You got a like just a regular screwdriver that's kind of longer. Joe, I got this little stubby here. It's don't it needs to be a smaller head, kind of like that one we were using the other day. The one we're using to pop those bearings. So we're gonna open that a quarter return. So now we're going to do a pop-off test on it. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and plug these two off. Just using a hose. So we still have this one open and this one. We don't have to do nothing with the pulse side. That one right? Yeah, here. You don't have to do nothing with the pulse side. I'm gonna pump up my little gauge here. See if it's leaking. Which it doesn't appear to be. Looks like it's popping off right around 23 or so. So that's good, 23 to 25 seems to work out pretty good for these guys. Try it again. I'm gonna go on the low side actually.
Yeah, it's right about 25. So that's good. Okay. So that's one carburetor down. Now both of them are the same, except I'm going to clean that off before I reassemble it. But um, both of the carbs are the same, so I'm only going to show you the fuel assist pump on this one, okay? And then the other one I will finish off camera. Pop that open. So, I can tell this is pumping already. So, just go ahead and take it apart and look at it. There's not much to these really. Usually what you're going to find out is that the little holes get plugged up and not this. What gets plugged is these little jet things, these little ports. And uh, these little ports right here will get plugged up. And you blow air through them to see if they're working. So you can tell that hose is moving there. to it so that's definitely working um, so this one works good go ahead and put it back together This diaphragm is a lot tougher than that one, way thicker, so it's just meant to last a lot longer. <coughs> Excuse me. Two pieces right there, a little plastic bushing. <clears throat> so 
So I usually spin around, put the plastic on this end, put that in there like that. And the first one I put in is the corner one because it's kind of it's pushing pretty hard. That's a pretty tough little spring right there. Pull this corner one in. Just get it down a little bit so it still moves a little bit. That's pretty much rebuilding this thing. That's about all there is to that. You can hear it. You can hear it sucking and stuff. It sucks from right here and blows out these. And I can feel it with my finger blowing. So, anyways, we're going to call that good. This set I'll finish off camera. And uh, that's pretty much it for a 951 carburetor. This particular cleaning is the same as you would use on a 1200R, an 800R. Um, everything is the same even on all Makuni carburetors except for this guy right here. Some of the carburetors you won't find this on. Like a 1200 non-power valve Yamaha won't have this guy. But most of the CD carburetors, anything north of 97 will have one of those on it. So, anyways, this video should help you out a lot. Thanks for watching. Be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.